how you guys, you guys know this man, you love him. He's got a pretty hot turtleneck on. He plays all over New York, New Jersey clubs and colleges. Please welcome Bill Sella. recognize me, but I have done a lot of extra work recently in movies and television. I had to be an extra on The Sopranos during that last season, which was a real big thrill for me. I got to sit at the bar at the Bada Bing Club and pretend to drink alcohol and look at topless girls for like four hours. Quite a stretch for me. <laughs> a brilliant performance. Although when the shoot was done, they told me the compensation was going to be $75. I thought that was fair, so I paid him. <laughs> now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering, you know, when you're doing a scene at the Bada Bing, do they actually give you alcohol? Well, unfortunately, the uh, booze is fake. But uh, I guess that's only appropriate because so are uh, most of the uh, boobs on the band. <laughs> of course, the big difference between fake boobs and fake booze is you can still have a pretty good time with fake boobs. <laughs> Now, by now, you can probably tell I haven't always been a stand-up comedian. I did have a regular job once, and uh, unfortunately, one day the boss came in and he asked me to send him an email when I was finished working on his project. I thought he said send him a she-mail. <laughs> you know, uh, what the fuck did I know? I mean, that's how he like to celebrate a complete ride. I don't work there anymore. But uh, last I heard, they were still together. Uh -oh. <laughs> now, uh, call me old-fashioned, but she-mails really fascinate me. Girls a pretty face, nice tits, and cute ass. Who might a little, little thing like a penis get in the way? <laughs> Think about it. There's really a lot of advantages to dating a female. Step a hard time in the month, so there's no PMS. That's a plus. You probably don't have to beg her too much to get her to have anal sex with you. <laughs> if she moves in, she's probably already got the his and her towels. <laughs> oh, and uh, best of all, as far as a threesome goes, well, you kind of have that with just the two of you. <laughs> anyway, uh, anybody see these commercials for doggy steps? This is an actual little staircase for dogs, with short legs. You've seen it. You know, if I wanted my dog on the bed of the couch, I would have had a dog with longer legs in the first place. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I have a Yorkshire Terrier. I love him. I spoil him rotten, in fact. Yeah, he's so spoiled, he wouldn't even use the doggy steps. He's waiting for doggy escalator. <laughs> yeah. His name is Oliver, and like I said, he's a Yorkshire Terrier. And like most descendants from England, he really loves to drink beer. If I'm drinking beer, i got to pour O'Doul's into his water dish, or he won't let me drink in peace. It's got to be O'Doul's. He's underage. And if I'm out drinking beer and I come home, he insists on French kissing me for ten minutes. Ugh. I'm kidding again. I'm the one who insists. <laughs> He doesn't really seem to mind. Anyway, I'm sure you're all sick of these prescription drug ads that list like a hundred horrible side effects that are ten times worse than what you had in the first place. But I'm going to share this with you anyway. It's for a nighttime sleep aid. I won't mention the name because I don't need a lawsuit. But it's a nighttime sleep aid, and one of the side effects is possible sleeplessness. <laughs> sleeplessness. You know, I already had that side effect. I don't know why I'm taking the fucking pill in the first place. <laughs> It's like taking Viagra and finding out one of the side effects is an extremely soft penis. <laughs> have that. <laughs> Again, I'm kidding. I've never taken Viagra myself, but my grandfather, he told me he was 86 years old. Yeah, he wasn't still sexually active, but he sure did enjoy walking around with a heart on. <laughs> Unfortunately, he stopped taking it a few weeks before he died, or we could have played horseshoes at the wake. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we probably still could have. He looked pretty stiff to me. <laughs> I guess uh, rigor mortis is nature's Viagra. But uh, he was quite a character, my grandfather. Actually, he really was sexually active at age, age 86. I just didn't know if you guys would believe that. Yeah, he used to have hookers come over to his house like two or three times a week. I thought this was really disrespectful <laughs> to my grandmother's memory. I mean... She was still alive. She just couldn't remember the hookers were there. <laughs> yeah, the uh, phrase dirty old man doesn't really do him justice because based on the stories he would tell us, he was pretty much a dirty young man, too. Ah, uh, yes, I remember the times around the holidays he would gather the grandchildren and proudly tell us all about the time that as a young man he gave himself a blowjob. <laughs> Needless to say, I was mortified. <laughs> Mortified that this particular trait doesn't run in the family. <laughs> the gray hair I got back. The ability to autofillate myself now. 
Thankfully, I don't need to do that to myself anyway, because I'm sure you all can tell. I can get a blowjob anytime I like. <laughs> all I need to do is pour a little O'Doul's on my crotch and I'm all set. <laughs> now I know why they call him man's best friend. Come on, I'm an animal though. Anyway, I was uh, driving by a school the other day and I saw this sign that said, uh, speed limit, 25 miles an hour when children are present. Now, how the fuck do I know if children are present? Should I go in and take attendance? <laughs> and you know, if they are present, who decided 25 miles an hour is an acceptable speed for a child to be run over? <laughs> you know, I realize 27 miles an hour, the kid could be killed, but 25 miles an hour, the car just bounces off? You know, the kids are fat today, but it's got to hurt a little. <laughs> Another sign I saw by the same school said, drug-free school zone. Yeah, these kids have it pretty good. When I went to school, I used to pay for my drugs. <laughs> but, um, I, guess, uh, I guess these free drugs do help when the fat kids are hit by the slow-moving cars. <laughs> but it does, it's got to be tough going to school these days. You have a lot of things happening now that just didn't happen when I was a kid. You have teachers having sex with the students. I don't know, that's something I might have enjoyed as a child, but it's probably not for everyone. You have school shootings, gang violence. You know, I guess those wedgies I used to get freshman year really weren't so bad after all. And uh, once I stopped wearing underwear, well, my homeroom teacher had no choice but to stop giving them to me. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was dating a girl a while back, and uh, when I actually brought over a bottle of wine for us to have with dinner, it had a screw-off cap. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a wine snob. So she had the nerve, the nerve to ask me if I wanted to smell the cap before we drank it. I said, I don't think that's necessary, honey. I'm pretty sure this bottle has a scratch and sniff label. She said she brought it over special for me in case I didn't have a corkscrew. Excuse me, what kind of a functioning alcoholic would I be if I didn't have a corkscrew? I was insulted. I was even more insulted when she said she also brought over her vibrator in case I didn't have an erection. I'll have you good people know. I always have an erection. Well, don't look like this minute, ma'am. I don't have it right now. I could if I wanted to, but I found a pill that takes care of that problem. It does the exact opposite of Viagra. It's called Niagara. Let me show you how it works. Don't worry, I'll use my finger. I don't want to knock your eye out. Viagra rises. Niagara falls. <laughs> now I know why so many newlyweds want a honeymoon in my penis. <laughs> Just hope they don't try to go over the barrel, though. It is quite a drop. <laughs> anyway, before I get out of here, let me share a little dating secret with you guys. If a guy takes out a girl, and the next day he tells people, well, she was nice, but there was just no chemistry. What he really means to say is, you know, I bought her dinner, but she didn't blow me. <laughs> now wait. You can avoid this from happening by getting this little task out of the way on the first day. Seriously, think about it. At some point during the first day, I don't know, maybe there's a lull in the conversation, you would finish her head. That whole awkward first kiss moment there in the evening can seem like nothing. I don't know, like fucking think of a respectable amount of time before you do that, maybe the third date, but by the third date, you can really start to like the guy. Isn't it better to find out on the first day that he's holding a Ken doll? Only thinking of you. I know if he's telling a Ken doll, it doesn't matter because why? Size doesn't matter. You ever know what skills say size doesn't matter? Only take guys who use a hula hoop for a cock ring? <laughs> On that note, I gotta get to the hula hoop store before they close. Thank you very much. Yeah. You guys are ready. Yeah. Yeah.